Hello, comrades, and welcome back to the Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, товарищи. Well, today we're going to talk a, a little bit more about HBO miniseries Chernobyl, and specifically about quite interesting reaction by Russian media. And when I'm saying Russian media, it automatically means state-owned Russian media, because since becoming the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin... He put a big effort to take over mass media in Russia. There are hardly any private mass media organization, newspapers or radio stations or TV station. Everything got bundled up and under state control. So, you know, that's the best way to fight fake news is when government owns mass media. So this is uh, what I would like to talk to you about today, about uh, how badly but heard Russian media about HBO miniseries Chernobyl. And I uh, went quickly through the some Russian websites, you know, the newspapers and other commentaries. And of course, you know, first of all, there'll be when you start an attack on something, you need to find some weak spots. So of course, first thing will be nitpicking. Okay. Uh, Well, they showed 1986 uh, Soviet buildings, but you could see modern windows and mon- modern balconies, so-called stiaklopaket. You know, back uh, uh, in the 80s, uh, when you wanted to, all the windows in our apartments were made out of wood, with a crappy quality. And uh, when you get an apartment, you know, sometimes you get a balcony. Uh, so in order to make balcony more use- useful kind of place, people will make a balcony uh, enclosed so they will uh, build like actually windows we would say so and they also made a wood that's what my father did and this way you can have you know enclosed so it's more like better climate control you don't have a cigarette butts flying into your balcony from above because you know that's what people did uh, back uh, in old days and still do now they go for a smoke on the balcony They have a smoke and then they just flick their cigarette butt down and it, if the wind blows it can that cigarette butt can fall on your balcony and sometimes it can catch fire. So it was always a good idea to have enclosed balcony, a critical balcon. And it used to be made out of wood. Uh, later in you know two thousands they switched to like plastic windows and plastic balconies and that can be noticed in this um, Chernobyl show because they decided it was too expensive to alter, you know, do the computer graphics and alter the, uh, the view of those balconies, because most, of course, American viewers wouldn't notice a difference. Then, of course, there was another uh, nitpicking deal is about a helicopter crash. It did happen, it just it didn't happen right away uh, when they tried to uh, dump sand was born inside of the reactor hole. A uh, helicopter crash happened actually like six months later, and that was uh, just an act pilot mistake. He flew too close to the crane and hit, uh, I think, like a cable hanging from the crane, and that made the helicopter crash. So they used the actual event. They just kind of moved it to add more drama, but of course, the Russian media went after that uh, hardcore. The most amazing comment that I saw, it was actually somebody claimed that HBO Chernobyl It was a strike against the Russian nuclear industry, Rosatom. That's the company that builds and services uh, nuclear plants. And that that show, the Chernobyl show, actually kind of showed the weak spots of the design of the Russian design or Soviet design. You can say it, Russian design was designed under Soviet Union. So now if the potential clients will be considering buying reactors from uh, Russia, they will think twice because it shows in a really ugly light uh, the quality of uh, nuclear reactors uh, from Russia. So that's kind of interesting. That's like it went that far. You know, conspiracy theories, uh, they go far, far. Another uh, discussion was that uh, about one of the main characters, the academic Legasov, uh, the scientific guy who was uh, helping to Uh, deal with the uh, Chernobyl accident about his hanging and about his attempt to tell the truth. Uh, apparently, he wrote articles, uh, tried to publish them uh, to share, uh, you know, inf- information about what actually happened in Chernobyl. 
uh, and because he was unsuccessful, uh, he wasn't rewarded properly, he hanged himself. So the people say, no, it's all lies because there is actually his article in newspaper, Pravda, the main newspaper. They just forgot to mention that the article was published after his death. So he couldn't push the article through, couldn't get it published. It got only published after his death. And then they showed another article, but that was totally on a different topic by by him, by Legasov, but it didn't have anything to do about Chernobyl. So they kind of also move, in you know, information here and there a little bit. You know, you just kind of switch cards, uh, try to present your um, story. So there's another interesting detail is even they went after Legasov hanging. Although there's a, quite a few people, um, it's a different topic, but they're thinking that Legasov actually was helped in his uh, suicide. Because they said it was the way it was done, it looked like it was a professionally made rope. Uh, you know, the whole hanging was like done by professional. <laughs> anyway, so this is what I've found so far about uh, Russian reaction to Chernobyl. But of course, the main question, why or why would Russian media get so upset about uh, Chernobyl show and is my opinion is that that show in just five short miniseries destroyed decades of hard work of Russian media uh, over building the image of the Soviet Union. Uh, since Putin took power in Russia and he kind of you know already for like 18 years I think he's the longest leader of Russia or Soviet Russia so far he beat uh, Brezhnev already I'm not sure if he beat Stalin or not, but, you know, 18 years, that's a long, long time. I mean, there's a whole generation grew up that only had uh, Putin as the leader. So during his uh, regime, that was one of the main projects is to restore the glory of the Soviet Union in the eyes of the new generation. I apologize for that annoying beeping noise. My dosimeter just went off, but it was only 3.4 millirem, so not a big deal. Not not great, but not bad. Just kidding, my dishwasher just finished doing dishes and started beeping, so I had to stop recording and shut it off. So as I said, uh, Russian media worked hard and relentless for years. They had a lot of movies coming out uh, about different historical events, like a lot about World War II, and, you know, like 28 Panfilovets uh, movie about 28 guys that stopped German tank division on, on the outskirts of Moscow. Uh, they had a T-34 movie, which was really pushed the limits about the capacities of Soviet tank versus German tanks. Um, there's a lot of movies and shows. So there was a big built up like, hey, Soviet Union was great. So kind of like mentally prepared uh, Russian people for restoring the Soviet empire, you know, and that all went in parallel with like taking Crimea away, Crimea away from Ukraine uh, and other st situations. So Chernobyl showed the ugly side of communist regime and I think this is why they really didn't like it. What was interesting about life in Soviet Union that we had like two parallel government structures. You know, you had your regular government and in parallel, and actually overruling that uh, government was the uh, Communist Party system. So, for example, at every factory, you know, you're going to have a director of the factory, and then you have a representative of the Communist Party. And quite often, he will be the guy that will be pushing the director to achieve specific marks, you know, how many uh, cars you must produce, or uh, what kind of you know, basically this decisions were based more on ideology than on practicality. And even in the military service, uh, if you study World War II uh, and the Soviet Union participation in World War II, we had so-called politruk, political uh, like leader, politički rukovoditelj, and he would be next to the main officer, pretty much like watching and interrupting if you, he not, he's not agreeing with the decision made by the uh, lead officer. And that could lead to totally disastrous results. For example, in a war, it's uh, like a game of chess. Sometimes you have to give, sometimes you have to back off, attack, you know, stuff like that. So you don't always just dig in and stay to the last soldier. You might need to 
give up if this position is not advantages and just regroup and politruk, you know, political leader will just say, nope, it's going to look bad. Uh, we are better than that. We're strong. We're going to defend our land to the last soldier, to the last um, drop of blood. And this is, uh, I think, one of the reasons why uh, Soviets lost so many people in World War II, because they just uh, were basing their military decision more on like political agenda versus like military strategy. Uh, they never, actually, like especially in 1941-42, there was no concept of okay, we need to pull back, regroup, uh, prepare new lines of defense. They would just stay in one spot, dig in, and, and Germans, of course, they will just encircle you, cut your supplies, and then you choke you, and then you have to give up and become prisoner of war, and they just annihilate you, and that's a bad, bad thing if you're so strict in your strategy that you defend every meter of your land without concerns about the soldier's life. So Chernobyl's show kind of presented the same situation, there's two main characters that uh, run in the efforts to contain the damage. You got Ligasov, who is a scientist, and then you got Shirbina, who is a, one of the communist leaders. And Ligasov can't do anything uh, without Shirbina because he has the levels, uh, leverages, uh, levelers uh, to get a Soviet machine in motion. And he tells them, like, tell me what you need. So they didn't, you know. So scientists had to prove to the communist guy who had no idea about, you know, like you saw it. He says, hey, explain me how the reactor works. Explain me how the explosion works. Uh, so guy had no concept like what he deals with. And he makes the final decision of what to do. And in the end of the show, uh, when they were talking, like they both know the dead man because they got so much radiation. Uh he says, hey, uh, you were the best person for this job because you actually listened to me and you did what I told you to do, uh, what Legasov said. So it shows you that, and, you know, they just got lucky. What about me? This guy said, no, we don't do it. I don't believe you. It's not according to our communist uh, ideology and radiation doesn't hurt. And, you know, so that's one of the problems, I think, with the whole Soviet system that uh, party ideas were... Uh, above economical ideas or common sense ideas and that's what uh, made soviet union so um, vulnerable to anything out of normal and chernobyl accident was definitely out of normal and of course the the way they showed the meetings with gorbachev again main guy who decides everything in soviet union he is the leader of communist party so we actually had a official leader of the Soviet state. My goodness, I'm trying to recall name. Maybe it was Gramyka at that time. So there would be official leader of the Soviet Union, but he was just like a decoration. Everything was decided by General Secretary of Communist Party. In that case, it was Gorbachev. So it'd be another. The party leader makes all the decisions, and of course he had no clue because he is not a professional. And you could tell how ridiculous those meetings were when the people just, you know, saying some patriotic uh, communist slogans, we are under control and Soviet people are taking care of the problem. And then Legasov gets up and he's like, stop it, stop it. It's really bad. It's not as good. We need help. And so it definitely showed the communist leadership is really not effective uh, and not knowing what is going on. And as I mentioned in my uh, first uh, uh, video about uh, HBO miniseries Chernobyl, about uh, five things that it's missing, they could make it way worse for the image of Soviet Union. Like, situation when the Soviet government, instead of telling their own people what happened, they played classical music on TV and on radio. Like, whole Soviet Union, you know, there's a the rumor flying around, we're trying to get some news, like what happened, and you turn the radio on, and government plays classical music for you. So I mean, that just shows you how horrible treatment was of their own people. They just didn't give you any information, and you know, okay, one thing they try not to tell uh, America or Western Europe what happened. You know, I, I can't understand that, but your own people. 
you don't tell them what happened, how horrible situation is, what kind of precautions they need to do to protect themselves from radiation. No, we're just going to play classical music. I mean, if they'll show that, that will be just huge, huge impact uh, on the whole understanding of the life in the Soviet Union. And another powerful scene that I saw, it was that meeting between uh, that fiction character, uh, Jaime Nuke Lady, uh, that kind of presented the whole scientist community. And she met with that party leader and she's trying to explain him what's going on and he looks real ignorant. And then she just tell him like, dude, I know better than you do. I'm a nuclear scientist and you worked as a director of shoe factory. And he kind of like with this pride response, responded, yes, I came from the shoe factory. And I was like, but look at me. Now I'm calling shots. I'm the boss. And for me, that was like, this is the example that people who climbed the a career ladder, there were a lot of times people who knew how to say correct uh, communist uh, slogans in the correct time and not because of their like, you know, out standing uh, some kind of knowledge or capacities so there we go there's a guy from the shoe factory who is making decisions and re refusing to believe nuclear scientists and of course i'm okay this is sounds maybe a little bit uh, i don't know how to say correctly like i compare my uh, ushanka show with Chern hbo chernobyl series because when you present just information the people who watch your channel that watch the show they make their own conclusions like hbo chernobyl there's a lot of people who me included who was kind of part of it because i lived in kiev in 1986 i'm like man they did a really good job and i agree with a lot of things and then there's the people who think it's total complete lies in the same time like my ushanka show People watch something about life in Soviet Union and I see comments they praise and some people condemn exactly the same situation. So one say, well, this is so awesome that you don't have a selection of 10 types of 10 brands of sugar. And other people say there's a classical socialism when you buy have no, no choice. So same situation with HBO Chernobyl. That scene between nuclear scientist and the party leader from Shoe Factory, like Stephen King saw Trump and that uh, communist leader. I didn't, but I kind of see why he came to that conclusion. Just a guy in the power, you know, at the position of power with no clue and no experience how to run things. So that's just kind of another example. I don't know, maybe it's not a really good one that when you present non-biased information it makes different people see different things in exactly the same item and as a nuclear cherry on the top uh, russia announcing that they're planning to make their own uh, chernobyl series but it will be more like an action-packed show and a scenario based that cia uh, creates explosion on chernobyl power plant and of course then soviet people and soviet troops uh, heroically fight the disaster, catch the bad guys, and everything is good. So we'll see uh, how they're going to do that. But um, yeah, I was uh, quite surprised about this uh, major butthurt that the Russian media uh, got from this show, which I believe and I think was done just... Um, they, did, they did an amazing job. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet.